Hey friends, welcome to Everyday Family Adventure. I'm Trent. And I'm Siobhan. And we're so glad you're joining us today. We're finally in Florida. I mean, Yay. if you're watching regularly, we were in Florida last week, but we yeah. really wanted last week's show to be all about the Tampa RV show, and we had a lot of fun. Uh, but this week, we're with friends, you know, like this is the main reason why we came to Florida. This is what we've been waiting for. This is what our boys have been boys waiting for. Boys have been for. waiting for it. Friends, friends, friends. It's all we've heard about for the last couple months. When are we going to Florida? When are we going to Florida? We've got lots of pockets of friends to see and lots of people to to be with and we're really grateful for that. You know, it's it's been a challenge for us because we're a big family and so you may make really good friends with you know this family that this has family toddlers that has a teenager or yeah and, you know <laughs> and so the challenge has been to just make sure we're kind of in the central location where lots of friends are one great thing though is that the very first friends that we saw was the ham family which you guys remember them from last year yeah they have 13 children that kind of spans the there's somebody for everybody <laughs> yeah somebody for everybody there that's the that's the one place that we can go where you and i just like I don't know what it just is. Relax. We just get this peace and quiet because our kids are always busy just hanging with their friends. What are you doing? What are you doing? Combing my hair. Why are you combing your hair? Because it doesn't look very well. Why doesn't it look very well? Because I want to show my friends that it looks Cool. And I look cool. Oh, you need to be cool for your friends? Yeah. What friends? Are you seeing friends today? Yeah. You are? And you and you want to look cool for your friends? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Do a good job. So, hey guys, here's one of the cool things that I love about Florida in January, besides this awesome weather, is the fact that tonight we're gathering up with a bunch of really cool friends, some road friends that we've met along the way all across the country, and they're here in Florida in January. So we're gonna have some fun tonight, bonfire, big huge long table. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because we got to fit all of our new friends, yeah. and our old friends, and the ham family too. All the ham family kids, yeah. Really excited tonight. Here's that big, huge, long table I was telling you all about. Look at that thing. Look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. Bennett, are you so glad to see Helene? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Hello! Carol, I don't see Doug. Hey, let me just pray over dinner. Guys, I'm so grateful you could all come tonight. Thank you for just being a part of our lives and hopefully we can have a lot of fun. Obviously, the kids are gonna have a lot of fun too. So, let's pray, all right? We gonna pray with me? Okay, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for all of these friends and this wonderful food. I pray that you bless it to our bodies and give us nourishment. Help us to have an amazing night tonight and keep us safe out on the roads. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, parents, parents, go get your kids' food and kids stay in here. Yeah, yeah. Big kids, big kids can go get food. Wrigley, come sit down. Thank you, Drew, man.
So that was a lot of fun, just to see and meet new people. Uh, the Parhams were there. Uh, they were new for us, which was great. And then the Easterlies, of course. I mean, if you guys have been watching our channel for any length of time, they're like a staple on our channel yes. now. We love that family so much. And then the Caliphs were with us, too, as well as the Hams. So, and we haven't seen the Caliphs since last winter. Right. So Mesa, Arizona, if you guys remember us doing the show on the Sunshine Acres. Children's Home. Which yeah. was awesome. So really great to just spend time with lots of great people. And if you guys remember last week, we had said, hey, we're in Florida. We need to get to the beach. And thank you for all of your help and all of your comments because we found a beach you want to tell them about this beach? This was a cool beach. Is we this like want... a secret thing? Like, do people know about this? No, I think people know about it. But um, apparently, especially in the, like, Tampa area, south of Tampa, for some reason, and it makes me not want to get in the water too far, <laughs> right? Like, for some reason, there are large quantities of shark's teeth that wash up on the beaches. And um, especially in the Venice, Florida area, and so we went to this place called Casperson Beach. Just south. Just just slightly south of Venice. And um, it was really cool. Like, it was so cool. We actually found real shark teeth. I couldn't get Siobhan out of the water. She was having so much fun. I have to tell you, like, this, this has kind of been a milestone year for me and the beach. For many, many years now, I have not been able to enjoy going to the beach at all because I've had little babies or little toddlers who... I've kept her barefoot and pregnant yeah. for so long. <laughs> well, it's it's just hard. Like, for the longest time, he would... He he grew up on, on Lake Michigan in West Michigan and yeah. spent his entire summers every year at the beach. In the summer, he like, every day. He loves the water. Yeah. And he just didn't understand why I didn't love the beach like he loved the beach. And it's because he's not a mom. But for a mom, all of you moms out there, tell me I'm right. For a mom, you cannot enjoy the beach when you have little bitty ones because the whole time you're like, where's so-and-so? Where's so-and-so? Did you see the baby? Where's the baby? Where's the, you know, where's the toddler? And it's just, it's nerve wracking. It's not enjoyable. But this year... We decided I, it would change when we're at a beach with sharks at it. <laughs> That's what changed. No, I don't but know. they're it, older. There's they're something. Older now. There's something that has changed this year. Wrigley is three now, and Graham is five, and they were just so content to play in the sand. They weren't even. They weren't even they into the sharks. They the very thing. edge to the water, but for the most part, they they stayed out of the surf. It was pretty cold, so I think that may have had something to do with it. Yeah. But I actually enjoyed playing with the big boys and just digging down into the, basically the where the waves kind of crashed onto the sand. That's where these shells and I mean it was just like a big blend of broken shells and and things. Um, but the boys had fun. It was like a treasure hunt. You get this big handful really, of really cool stuff, and you can find some really cool shells. You can find lots of sharks' teeth. A lot of fun. Wrigley's in daddy's eyes? <laughs> there is. Where? I don't see the Wrigley's. <laughs> There's Wrigley's in there? Dad. There is. I love Wrigley's. <laughs> what do you do, Sully? Peas in the ocean. <laughs> you what? 
peed in the ocean. We are having lots of fun out here just getting shells. I'm really finding this is like the place to go because there's so many people here that have these like specialized baskets for shell finding and shark teeth finding. So I asked one of the gentlemen over here if they actually like sell them because I'm like just seems like a crazy hobby. There's so many people doing it down here. They just, he said, no, we just collect them. We like them. I'm like, man, that's awesome. Daddy, when I, come Daddy, when I, come I bet you there's like the teeth airport, finding clubs on Facebook. Daddy, what? When I come back to the airport, <laughs> just a bunch of people being kids, you know? Whether you're 70 or 7, <laughs> you can come and collect shells here in Florida. Love it. So we had tons of fun at the beach. It was so great. And uh, we ended up staying a little longer at the Hams. Um, not that they were so gracious to let us stay longer, but it wasn't we, a bad thing. No, it was awesome. But we ran into something just a little bit of a hiccup. A, a hiccup. A little hiccup. And this is new for us. We knew this was coming, mm -hmm. and we're so grateful that, like, financially, we were prepared for it, um, which is awesome. And that's a that's a testament in and of itself. If, again, if you guys watched our channel last last December of 2016. You know, we were, we were not doing well, yeah. and finances are always a, um, a prayer point for us. I mean, as they are for for a lot of people, and and we're very grateful. But to say, um, when we got to the border of Florida, I had filled up the tanks, and I always check the tires, check the pressure on the tires, and just look them over. Everything looked fine, and then we got to Lakeland, or or just south of Lakeland. And I discovered this like quarter size break yeah. in the sidewall yeah, of our like rear tires. Yeah, it looked like a little tires. slot that you could drop a quarter in. Yeah, and, and that's not dry good rot. In a <laughs> not, not good in not a tire. Good, not good, and these tires are expensive. So we wanted to take a minute to just talk you through our research and hopefully mm -hmm. give some helpful hints and tips for how you yeah. guys can go about researching and finding the right tires for your coach because the reality is living in an RV full-time or not traveling in an RV whether it's a fifth wheel uh, a tow behind or a motorhome like ours tires are a necessity yes and it just so happens that motorhomes have the most expensive tires but maybe you guys can learn from our our mistakes right and you hopefully know? if you have any other hints that you can add along then please do Definitely leave them in the comments. So let's talk them through some of the things about tires. What to know. Okay. First of all, tires have a life expectancy of about five to seven years. Mm -hmm. And after five years, you should really, really be paying close attention to the sidewalls on the tire. Make sure there's none of that cracking in there. Because what happens is, um, especially on these motor homes, we have these big heavy duty tires with like you know one inch deep tread on it and you right. go and just quick look and you see that tread looks good you know but it's not like looking at a car tire you know not. i always used to look at the tread and yeah. think okay we're, we're doing good it's different and and see these these tires have this deep tread because truckers drive on these same exact tires that go on our motorhome our truck semi truck tires and so these trucks will drive you know miles and miles and miles every day and they'll wear down the tread before the life of the tire is done it's the complete opposite in RVing right. your your life of your tire is gonna go before the tread does and so you have to really pay attention you have two enemies to tires one is Sun and heat and the other is sitting and both of those things happen very often in RVing. Right. And it's one of the reasons that our tires did not explode on us. And I mean, one of the reasons we didn't have a terrible accident 
we discover that our tires were actually nine and ten years old. Isn't that crazy? Crazy. We didn't think they were but, that old and we yeah. checked them a lot, but we didn't know like how to find the date of your tire. Yeah. So that's another important thing that we're going to talk about. The reason why our tires weren't as bad as they could have been is because we move very often. Um, it's a good thing for your tires to move. It's a bad thing for it to sit. So if you are an RVer who likes to go and stay for one month in one place, you know, two months, even more, it's, it's actually not good for your tires. You really, really have to pay attention and really protect the tires. For us, it's not as, not as big a deal because we are, you know, every week, every two weeks on we're the moving. road. Yeah, we're moving a lot. Um, so talking about the date though, that's a big deal and we just never really yeah well here's why it's a big deal and Siobhan mentioned that it's the fact that when it, when you have an RV you're more likely for the tires to go out by age and dry rot than you are by the treads and so you need to check the tire all the the date all the time now for us we didn't actually know that we we knew that we were supposed to be checking well, the we, pressure all the time. Yeah. We knew we needed to check around it all the time, but I never really thought of how to check the date. Yeah. Well, we knew when we bought the coach that um, one set of our tires, either the front or the back, was newer than the others. And, um, and we knew that we were going to have to replace tires in the next couple of years. We also knew that they are very expensive. This isn't like a car tire, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, but we didn't realize how old the tires were. Honestly, the tires should have been replaced before we ever drove a single mile in this. Like I said, they were nine and 10 years old. That's way too old. But we didn't know because the date of the tire, also called the DOT code, was on the inside of the tire. So we didn't even know how old the tires were. We didn't even know how to find that, but now we do. Make sure you guys are checking your DOT codes, especially if you're buying a used RV. Right, so here's don't a Don't just tip. take what somebody tells you. Yeah. Not that I really don't think that the previous owner knew how old the tires were because for him, he had bought it from someone and took taken their word and the DOT codes were on the inside of they were on the inside they were they were concealed so um, yeah so pay attention to that if you are if you important. have a motorhome and you're getting new tires on it make sure whoever is putting your tires on puts it with the DOT facing out out so you that have a constant you reminder <laughs> when you're yeah, how old your tires are super super important another thing that someone had mentioned to us when we were talking about how we were going to have to replace our tires um somebody in one of the forums said you should look into having a sinking fund for your tires hmm. which is such a great idea it's so important because like we've said rv tires are not cheap especially if you've got a class a motorhome they're super expensive we didn't have a sinking fund we are blessed this time that we had the funds in our emergency fund but it would be so much greater to not even touch that emergency and to just know it's coming to not it would be so much greater to not touch that emergency fund and have a separate account that's just for tires. You know, you're throwing $10 yeah. a month. Not, you know not a coming. big deal. Yeah. But in five to seven years, you're going to have enough in that account to pay for those tires. Right. So we wanted to talk to you just a little bit about the type of tires that we bought and uh, what we could have gotten. So now we called around to a bunch of different truck places. The other thing I would recommend to what we did is we have a really, really awesome forum of other four travel owners that helped us out a lot. And we're so grateful for that. So we mm -hmm. use this oftentimes when it comes to us looking into things that we don't know about our RV. Right. They're amazing. So. That's a little hint for you if you're thinking of buying a Ford yes, Travel. Yes, because we knew nothing. Um, we, knew we knew nothing, nothing about tires. Absolutely nothing. So uh, the nice thing is that we could have gone with what everyone goes with, and that's the Michelins. We didn't do Michelin. They are, I think, on the higher end. There's a bunch of other options that you could go with. What we found is that because of the popularity of some other brands, there was just a lot of things out of stock for yeah. the area that we we're in. Mm -hmm. The kinds that we had on our rear tires were Continentals, and honestly, um, they're a little cheaper, and we also have the FMCA discount. 
So right. that's also really good. We have our family motor coach discount, which is awesome. We were able to get those Continentals for a pretty good price. And I think the thing for me that honestly sold me to going back to the Continentals was the fact that they lasted, they lasted for 10, 10 years. years. <laughs> so they shouldn't have lasted shouldn't have, 10, 10 years. I'm just saying that it wasn't. It was Guys, easy on the decision making. We drove 35,000 miles on tires that were too old. Yeah, so not and a great suggestion. And we're so suggestion. thankful that we're all here and we're okay. Yeah. And we didn't blow a tire, cause yeah. any damage or any accidents. But um, but that's a good tire right there. But so. You need to know, like, if you don't know anything about tires, know this. Know to check the date, okay? Uh, find something like the Family Motor Coach Association to become a member in because it literally saves you hundreds, hundreds of, of dollars. dollars. And when you're talking about a tire, uh, one tire, one of our RV tires, is going to be between five to $700 per tire. And that's for a quality tire. And that's for a you quality can get, tire. You Look, can get really cheapo tires for a lot cheaper than that. But... Right, but there's all these little things that you need to know about. Like in the Flor state of Florida, there's the Florida State New Tire Fee. New There's tire. the the removal from the rim fee. There's the tire balancing fee. There's the scrap tire fee. Then there's this thing called the FET. I don't even know what FET means. That's what I call my cat. <laughs> There's lots of little little add-ons that add up. Things. So when when you you know get your pricing on your tire and your tires. Five hundred thirty-five dollars, but out the door it's six hundred and fifty dollars. Right. What? So the FMCA discount came in handy a lot. Yes, I'm so thankful for the F FMCA. Beyond the discount, it also helped us locate a dealership that was yeah. reputable, which was yeah. awesome. So let me tell you guys how awesome the FMCA is. I called the lady. Our our membership had actually run up. I called the lady and I said, we desperately need new tires. I know you guys have a tire program and can we renew our membership? Sure. You know, it's $50, I think, is yeah. the membership. Um, and not only did she renew my membership, but she went and got all the pricing on all the Michelin tires in our size, all the Continental tires in our size, all of the, I think it was Bridgestone. There was one other um, brand of tire. Um, in our size and she located all the dealers in our area which was amazing like I had no idea that she was gonna do that she did it all all this research that I was like having a headache yeah that's a over. lot of stuff right that's a whole like when lot you know stuff. nothing about it I guess we would say like that would be our recommendation to go to the FMCA first secondly you might be able to message us because we know a lot more now but we would probably tell you to go there first. There's a lot There's a lot of things. There's just a lot of tires out there. Yeah. And that's a very valuable thing on your RV. It's protecting your family. You're doing lots of miles on these. So we just wanted to take the time to do the proper research to get the right tire for us. And even that, like I also learned that we've now moved away from the Ham's house. We're not that far north, but I'm supposed to get these things re Checked retorked. and retorqued yeah. at between, I think, 100 miles is what it says. Yeah, on the 25, receipt. To 100 25 to 100 miles. miles. So, and we'll do that. Yeah. Um, as well as somewhere here in the near future, we're going to need to be buying some new front tires because those are going to be five years old here in just a little bit. So, here's another tip when you're them. leaving, <laughs> when you're leaving the tire oh, place. Yeah. <laughs> Don't assume. Don't assume anything. Just do everything that you would normally do like, when leaving for a trip. My like mom checking always your tire said, pressure. you know what assuming does. I'm gonna yeah. let you guys fill in the blank. So, but but you're you still gotta double check everything. We checked all the tires, you know, with the service tech, and everything looked good. But Trent just had this gut feeling he was like i'm just gonna do it's my normal like a routine. force of habit normal routine. yeah i'm gonna yeah. do my normal routine and he went around with a tire pressure gauge and our tires were inflated like like 115 120 i thought you told me 120 well, yeah well they they so, were way higher than they should have trucks been. yeah because this is these are places that put these tires on trucks, trucks and they behave so. differently than like ride comfortability for an rv and what yeah. you know the weight of your RV is. So there's just a lot in there, guys, and don't take that lightly. Mm -hmm. um, if you 
have not gotten into the RVing lifestyle and you're interested in doing it like us, know that that is a cost you want to take into consideration when buying your RV. Like, hey, is this used? How old are these tires? Yeah. Because how I know how soon am I going to how have soon to be am I going to have to drop like you know four couple, grand? No, three two. grand. Well, if you're getting all six, it would be... Oh, if you're getting all of them, you're yeah. All six. Yeah, so three, four grand if you're... It's a lot. It's, you know, we're talking, we're talking a lot. So anyways, there's our little uh, soapbox all about tires. Hopefully that helps you guys. Um, if you have any more questions about that, shoot us a comment below because this is now something we're experts in. Can we're I... actually tire experts. No. <laughs> we're not. We're not. But uh, we did. We learn survived a whole lot. the experience. Yes, and we're grateful that, like she said, that we're all safe. So, yeah. we need to finish off our day with our believer bump. Believer bump. Boom. Boom. This week's believer bump is from Missy Josiefol. I'm assuming Missy. So, hello. Hi. <laughs> She said, I laughed when you mentioned your boy's rock collection. You've got to see The Longest Trailer, a full-length film made in the 50s starring Lucille Ball and Ricky Ricardo. You will enjoy, you will totally enjoy it, especially because Lucy collected rocks from everywhere they went. Take care and God bless. So, the movie's called The Long Long Trailer, and we've been hearing about it from I've been about several it for years. people, yeah. And and every time I've gone to find if it's streaming, it hasn't been. And so we just haven't seen it. Well, I went and checked, and it's it is on streaming iTunes. on iTunes. So you guys have to go watch it, it especially is so if you are an RVer oh, and you haven't God. seen it yet. So so we funny. We loved it. It was really great. Oh, there's so many quotables in there. I just can't believe I can't believe how much the RV life now is exactly like it was in 1950. Oh yeah, like, like when the they pulled up to the problems. RV park and everybody helps you like, ah, <laughs> even this park that we're at right now, like some older gentleman came out and he's... I mean, this guy's like, been parking this RV for two years, <laughs> but a guy comes out and he's like, I'll help you get it in there. <laughs> I'm like, that's great. Anyways, we loved the movie and that actually had us chuckling and laughing. So all, funny. Even the boys. Know, the, yeah. And the boys just laughed Trailer so breaks, hard. trailer breaks. So it's really, really good. <laughs> Good. Guys, you got to watch that. So. Yes. Hey, thanks so much for coming on to our channel. If you like watching us and like maybe even some of the RV tips that we're giving you guys, don't forget us to, to give us a thumbs up thumbs and subscribe up. if you haven't subscribed. We absolutely love doing this. We love our journey and the adventures that we get to go on. And every little bit helps. Uh, if you guys don't know about our Patreon channel, please go check that out because that's where we often release our new music first this is what Siobhan and I do so we're gonna let you go today so remember we can make the world better I believe we can and we, we believe, believe you, you can, can too, too.